Hello folks, just out in the garden, me and Sharon have just been out for lunch. It's a lovely day, I'm not feeling all that well at the moment, I've had this cold for the last week, so um, I'm just going to do a little bit of cleaning up in the garden. Grass needs cutting, things need watering. Come with me on that little journey, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Right, well, as I said, um, I've been doing a bit of resting over the last few days. The weather's not been great, it's been raining. I keep meaning to do stuff. I've got a few bits of stuff to do on the cars out the front. The Mondeo still needs an oil change. And you might remember in one of my other Mondeo videos, I was uh, changing the spark plugs on that because it had a slight misfire every now and again under load. And I changed the spark plugs, but that didn't actually do the job. So I've gone out and bought a coil pack for it. So um, we'll be fitting that in the another episode, but it may, may even be later on today, but there'll be a dedicated video for that one as well. Um, garden's growing well, as you know. The uh, grass needs a cut. I've done a little bit of skimming off on the pond. Still loads more to do on that yet, but um, that's a job waiting to be done. All the weeds have got to be pulled from around the pond area, as you know, because they're blocking up the actual pump that puts the water up to the water fountain. And uh, yeah, so I better get my finger out now and um, start doing a little bit of work around the garden so you can come with me and watch me if you like. That's better. All right, come and sit down, dogs. Oh, oh, that sun's bright. Them dogs are murder when you're cutting the grass. It's bad enough with uh, Barney. Keep yap, yap, yapping and all that. Now you've got Bison. You saw that big log, which I took back. He always, for God, God knows why, but he keeps bringing it back out. So I've got the two of them now tormenting me when I'm doing the garden. So there you go. I've got to put up with it. And he loves the hose. I can't water the, the uh, plants and all that without Bison trying to jump in there. So he's actually worse than Barney for the garden. So there you go. Well, I'm glad that's done. There's still loads more to do, but it's half past three now on a Friday afternoon. Oh, that's lovely, that's lovely and cold. Yeah, got so much more to do yet, but uh, I've not been feeling all that well. Sharon had a virus. Hold on. <coughs> Sorry, not Sharon. Tracy had a virus, my daughter. And then I caught it. I got it about three or four days after her. And it's one of these heady type viruses that sort of lingers on and on in your system. As I say, she's four days in front of me and she's still got it now. But uh, leaves you with a headache, all your sinuses blocked up and stuff like that. Now, these ain't, this ain't flu, you know? I remember like years and years ago, you always used to get people saying, oh, I've had the flu, and it lays you up in bed for a, uh, a week or so, and that's the flu. These things, they don't stop you from operating, but they make you operating feel lousy, really lousy sort of thing. They're like underlying viruses that just sort of nibble away at your, your immune system. And one thing I always find, when I go to the doctors, and again, this never used to happen before until I hit 50. And every time I go to the doctors now, they asked me if I want to go on statin drugs for because of my age bracket. Now, that isn't looking after my health, surely. There's pl pl at the end of the day, I believe that the hum your immune system is there and it provides you, providing you feed it properly with proper nutrition, stuff like that, and you have a healthy, balanced life, then you, 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 you know, unless you've got something which is uh, a, an abnormality, then obviously your immune system can't fight that, and then you've obviously got to take some sort of medication or or whatever to correct it but 
in in general circumstances, just because you're at an age of 50 doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go on this drug called a statin for for life. It's like the pharmaceutical company uh, companies are, are telling doctors, right, we want you to sell as much drug because they're all businesses at the end of the day. And it's like, we want you now to sell more of this stuff or push this stuff and then you'll obviously get a better reward if you push more of our product, that sort of thing. So it's all about product placement now. Another thing is where we went into a shop uh, this week. Now, you know when you go into like a, a fast food store, whether it be a, a Burger King, McDonald's or whatever, or Kentucky, something like that, they'll always try, when you, when you go out to pay, you, you've, all made, you've made your order and then they'll always say, do you want to go large on that, or do you want to try, would you like a large Diet Coke, or would you want to eat it? There's always some other phrase, they, they all say it. Anyway, we was in this shop the other day, and it's just a shop, like a factory shop, and we've, we've shopped there for like a number of years, and uh, you know you, you don't get pestered like that. But the people in front of us uh, were getting served, and I just happened to over here, the, the woman behind the till mentioned to the woman who was, bought her stuff, could we interest you in our sweets? They had a, like a display of sweets, packets of sweets on the counter there. And the people in front said, no, thank you, whatever. And I've said to Sharon, I bet we get asked that question. So anyway, we get up there and we're, we're getting served and that. And uh, sure enough, the woman said, after we've put our stuff, what we want from the shop on the counter, and we want to pay for the stuff that we want, uh, could I interest you in it? I said, I bet they make you say that, didn't they? She said, well, it's um, it's it's called the upsell. I said, oh, yeah, I know, I said, I know exactly what it is. I said, but don't you find that frustrating? That you obviously know that people when they come up to you on the counter, you see again, you're not get by talking to the people who are doing this, they're just the puppets. It's the big corporations that are making people even say certain things now just to get more money. And another one is like Sports Direct. One of the great things if you go in a Sports Direct here in the UK. And we went in there with a friend the other week and uh, she was in front of us in the queue. And again, they like to do the upsell. And their upsell is their big bag for life. They do a big Sports Direct, like a fibre, not fibre, it's like a plastic uh, bag or whatever. And you buy one of these, it's called a bag for life, whatever they call that for, I don't know. And I, the, the woman in front of us was our friend and she went up and they said to her, uh, could we interest you in our bag for life, whatever. And she went, um, yeah, go on then as though that woman was doing my friends or our friend a favour. And this is why they do it, because they know that they won't, they're not going to catch everybody, but they do know that every so percentage out of so many, and this is how they work it all out. It's all done on statistics. Well, if we tell 100 people, and then we might get 30 people, that's 30 sales that we wouldn't have had. But in the end of the day, doesn't it get on your nerves? Just like the old telly sales stuff that you get when you watch, they used to do telly sales between Monday to Friday at work, uh, when, when you, you know, during the day. Now, they can find out half past seven, eight, nine o'clock at night to try and sell your stuff, insurance policy or PPI claims or whatever. Unbelievable. Another thing, listen to this one. I'm not ranting, I'm not ranting. These are just things that come up in your normal day-to-day -day life. When you're trying to live your normal day-to-day -day life the way you want to live it, and you're still bombarded by subconscious or subliminal stuff by people trying to get money out of your pocket. And this is another one. I, I said to Sharon, like, what we originally got the transit van for was to um, go out and, like, take the dogs out in the back of the transit van or whatever. I've got the same one here. I feel my sinuses are blocked up. I can't hear properly. Hold on. Oh, lovely. Yeah, so that's the reason why I got the transit van, but we've not actually had to, had to do that yet because I had all the work to do on the transit van. Then we've had, like, family things that we've had to sort out and... Um, we haven't got to that stage yet. But anyway, we was in Lincoln shopping the other day and um, Sharon says, oh, there's a camping shop with a, like big sale signs and all that outside. Let's go and take a look in there. Because I was after a little camping table. I've got two little stoves, which I can uh, take out. But I wanted like two little, like a little camping table, a little chair maybe, and maybe a windbreak or something like that. Anyway, you drive up there, outside 60% sale, blah, blah, blah. And then you go in there and there's all the sale, 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 60% off most stuff or whatever, and then everything's priced up. Anyway, walks along, I find these two, well, not these type of chairs, the, the, you know the ones that pull out and they've got a little cup holder in the handle sort of thing? And these are advertised, big letters on the sign behind it, five pounds each. Well, that's too good to be true. We pulled them out, had a look at it, and oh, we'll have two of them, me and you shall, we'll have one each. Underneath it was a, a recommended retail price of uh, 18 pounds, 
and then there was a store price uh, I don't know what it was uh, 12 pounds something like that and then it had something like a discount card price big letters a fiver so of course we took it five pound both then we goes around we find a little camping table uh, which I bought as well that, at a big price again sale again 20 pounds so I spent 30 pounds at this stage and I think there was a couple of other little things as well I can't remember what it was now anyway cut a long story short we saw one of our friends in there and they said oh you can get a discount card and get even more money off oh, okay well when we get when we go out to pay we're going, we'll, we'll, we'll inquire but they said you've got to pay a fiver for it okay well fair enough anyway so we goes up to the till and the woman says do you want me to work your price out before the discount and then also if you had the discount card yeah fantastic brilliant she does all the tipping on the till and she comes out don't forget the two items come for about 32 36 quid something like that she says uh well, if you didn't have the discount card, it'll be 60 odd pounds. I said, you what? There was a queue of people behind me. I said, you what? I said, I think you've got to check your, your, your till register again. She said, no, and the discount price is uh, 30 blah, blah pounds. So you're going to make over like nearly 30 pounds worth of savings. I said, well, hold on a minute. How much are them two chairs? Because I'm sure I've seen them priced up at five pound each. Yes, but uh, that was the uh, card price, the discount card price. I said, there was a big letters there telling me that was five pounds. As far as I was concerned, so anyway, I, I walked away, walked back to the, the uh, thing. Little letters, RRP, re recommended retail price, 18 pounds or something. In-store price, 12 pounds something for these two stretches. And the one they got big letters, but they worded it as I say, discount card, blue card price or something like that. Big letters, a five. Of course, that's the one you always take to. That's the one you think you're going to pay. So at the end of the day, I said, the... Uh, well, obviously, I'm going to pay the fiver. Now, this is where it gets a little bit sneaky because, obviously, they want you to buy a discount card. Well, that's all well and good. You get a discount card, you can get that price. I still made savings over... Anyway, so that wasn't a problem. So then the next thing she asked me is, oh, can I take your name and address and telephone number? Don't forget the queue's behind us. I said, well, with all due respect, I said, uh, you ain't going to start sending me marketing stuff, are you? Um, well, we don't have to. They weren't, they weren't going to tell me this if I would ask this question. Normally what people do is ask for your name, address, telephone number, and people give it. They give them the discount card. And before you know it, you've uh, subconsciously, not subconsciously, you've um, unknowingly signed up to their newsletter and their promotional stuff, which is nothing I want to be involved in anyway. What they should have done was ask me, do you want to be put on a mailing list, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, cut a long story short. So I, I come out with that question. She said, well, OK, then on, on their form, what they fill in on the computer system when you buy the card or when you take the discount card, they take your name, address, uh, telephone number, and email address and all that lot. I said, well, okay, you need my name. I said, I'm, I'm gonna give you my address. I said, but I, want, I don't wanna be sent no mailing stuff. So then on the computer screen, this person doesn't require uh, mailing, or wants to go on mailing register or whatever. They had to physically, un the box was already ticked. That's the point I'm trying to get to. So we had to untick them boxes. And then I said, I'm not gonna give you my phone number. I said, no, I'm not going to give you my email address. I said, so those, those two boxes done tick now means that I can qualify for that discount price. But what I'm saying is, is it's all cloak and daggers. So all this big display, now should companies be allowed to get away with that or do that? Isn't there such a thing as the Advertising Standards Authority where these people play within the rules or just on the, 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 the right side of the rules? Now, surely that shouldn't be wrong. That's, that's got to be wrong, surely. Because we're getting taken advantage of for every left, right and centre, just like parking tickets and stuff like that, just like speed cameras and all that, when it's all due for, for revenue. It's all first to be uh, health and safety because of putting cameras on roads where people notoriously would speed in, for example. And now they just pop up anywhere. And then it's all, it's, it's all, it's all revenue generation. Anyway, that's enough of that. I'm going to sit in now and enjoy my drink. Um, I still can't hear how to see it properly. Feels like it's blocked. Worst thing is when I'm in bed at night and I'm laying down horizontal. But yeah, trying to get me on the statin drugs because I'm over 50. Drug companies. And uh, don't stand, don't pull up with it. Don't tell anyone your telephone number. Don't tell anyone your address. I don't want to be in contract with any of these people. I'm going in there to buy something. They're saying there's an offer on. Okay, I can get more discount if I buy it. You have your discount card, which means I can go into their store now. But you shouldn't have to go through the situation of having to question these people when they take for granted that you're just going on the mailing list. And it's so sneaky the way they do it. Anyway, think about that next time you're in. Don't be precious sold or sneakily sold anything or to go on a mailing list. If someone wants your name and address when you go in a shop and buy something, they want to send you other stuff. 
Don't fall for it. Don't create a contract with these people because a contract, remember, the first free word is con, and that's what they are. They want to con you out of your money. That's what it's all about. Anyway, a little bit of a rant now after I've done the garden. I've let off a bit of steam now. I'm going to sit down and enjoy this nice cold glass of iced water, uh, fizzy water, and then I'm just going to shut my eyes, have a little ponder, upload this video, and then wait for some comments to come in on this one. Okay then, thanks very much. See you again in the next video. Hopefully some car videos and a bit more gardening stuff as well. I've also planted some more stuff in the greenhouse as well, and I'll show you that in the next uh, video. Okay then, bye for now. Cheers. Mm -hmm.